Keep reading. Some of you are already, I can tell, some of you are already going, oh, wait. There is a political, philosophic observation that's being made here by Robert Frost about the way humans relate to walls. Let's keep reading. The gaps, I mean. No one's ever seen them made or heard them made. In other words, walls have a natural tendency to dissolve, to come down. But, it's an important but, look at it with me, line, line 11. At spring mending time, back to our title and the prayer knowledge that you need, we find them there. Find what there? What's the antecedent to the pronoun them? See, I'm teaching you now to read much closer. We find what there? We find them there. What are we, what's he talking about? The gaps, right? The gaps in the wall. We find them there. I let my neighbor, this will be an important word for us. Let's write this word down at 2A. Obviously, this is going to be a poem about neighbors, right? For those of you that grew up with Mr. Rogers, won't you be my neighbor? That very phrase is attributable in large measure to a poem like Mending Wall, where the question of what it means to be a neighbor Neighbor, of course, means what? In its literal sense, what is a neighbor? He or she who you live next to, right? The person you live next to. That's what we mean by neighbor in the literal sense. Of course, metaphorically, and this poem had a lot to do with making the word neighbor a metaphor, neighbor can have another kind of meaning. It can have to do with what? Community, right? Let's keep reading. I let my neighbor know beyond the hill. Tells you that. We're talking about a large amount of space, right? And on a day we meet to walk the line, the famous phrase, walk the line, walk the fence, and set the wall between us once again. And again, some of you will start to go, oh. So quite literally, you've got this word picture. It's a compelling word picture, right? Okay, here's the wall. Start, it's breaking down in parts. There's gaps. Rocks are falling down. You're on one side, I'm on the other. And we walk the line. And every time there's a rock, I bend over, I pick up my rock, I put it. You bend over, you pick up your rock. We've got to close the gaps. We've got to build the wall back up. Right? Of course, some of you are already going, ah, oh, wait. Metaphorically, this poem is going to ask a very intriguing question. Do you think it's at all possible, remotely possible, that humans build walls between each other? Construct walls. Now, of course, we can talk about literal walls, but here we're probably speaking more about what? Metaphoric walls, right? We set the wall between us once again. We keep the wall between us as we go. By the way, notice this, the wall, over and over again. It, we'll jump to 3A here in a while, and we'll remind ourselves that one of the classic albums in rock and roll in the 20th century was the band's Pink Floyd, simply called The Wall. Let's take a look now. To each, the boulders that have fallen to each. They're, they're, they're fixing the wall. They're mending the wall. Some are loaves. That is to say, some of the rocks are, are loaves. And some so nearly balls, we have to use a spell to make the balance stay where you are until our packs are turned, quote unquote. In other words, it seems kind of natural that even the rocks themselves, the stones, do not want to stay where they're put. Even the rocks themselves want to roll off. They're so perfectly round. We wear our fingers rough with handling them. Line 20 suggests what? Is building, rebuilding, mending the wall easy or is it hard work? Write down what you think. Is it easy or is it hard work? He says, we wear our fingers rough with handling them. We work so hard to build this wall back to make sure this wall is not going to be allowed to come down. And then the next line, kind of like ironic in a joke. Oh, just another kind of outdoor game, one on a side. It's a fascinating observation. It's like volleyball. It's like tennis. <laughs> you, have, you have two people on either side of the, of the wall, and they're playing a game of a kind. Okay, 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 I'll pick up a rock. I set it there. Oh, the rock fell back down. Oh, I pick it up again. I set it there. Looked at it abstract, you'd probably go, oh, wait. If you had a young person with you, the young kid might go, what, 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 why, are, why are we doing, doing this? Oh, wait, there is a young person. He's the one speaking, or about to. Let's take a look. He says, it comes to little more. It's like silly, it's like a game. 
And then all of a sudden it occurs to the speaker of the poem. Now I hope that you are paying close attention. Read with me at 879. Because all of a sudden I'm hoping this poem will begin to open up for you. And you're going to go, oh, 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 Robert Frost is doing something very cunning. Very cunning. Up to this point he simply said, you know what, it's kind of funny. Uh, we get together, we build this wall back up every spring. We do this every spring. We've been doing this for generations. We've been doing this thing because you've got to have that wall there. And all of a sudden he asks the question a little more. He says, there where it is, the wall. We do not need the wall. Dude, why are we doing this? He is all pine. I'm apple orchard. My apple trees will never get across and eat the cones under his pines, I tell him. <laughs> In other words, it's a funny word picture. It's ironic. Uh, are, are, are we worried that maybe your pine trees are going to jump up out of the ground and come marching over onto my side of the property? My apple trees are going to say, I've had enough of living in this orchard. I'm going to go over to that orchard and jump up out the ground. To quote Shakespeare's Macbeth from Act 4, that will never be. When, of course, the prophecy is that the trees of uh, Burnham Wood will march up the hill of Dunsany Hill. We'll study that in our senior year. He says, trees don't jump out the ground and march onto the other property. Why are we doing this? And then the answer. Because he asks him. He says, what, what's the point of this? He only says, good fences make good neighbors. Notice the word only. What's significant about that word? What is significant about the word only? So they're having this activity, this tennis volleyball game activity, right? And all of a sudden the young kid, the speaker of the poem goes, really? Really? But seriously? What, what, why are we doing this? He only says, good fences make good neighbors. Do you have a sense that they're having a lot of a conversation here? No. You do have the sense that the young man wants to ask this question, though. And as he's maybe picking up the stones, he's like, uh, okay, we've been doing this for a while, right? Right. Why? This is silly. It's not like my trees are going to jump up and go into your property, or your trees are going to jump up. We don't have livestock. The only response that comes back is, good fences make good neighbors. This is a great time of the year for us to get together and say, morning Jim, morning Bob, let's pick up the rocks again. Good fences make good neighbors. Spring, now the poem's going to shift. Spring is the mischief in me. And I wonder if I could put a notion in his head. Why do they make good neighbors? Why do building walls make good neighbors? The response is, hey, hey, gives us a reason to get together. Every spring, walk up to the fence, shake hands. Morning, Jim, morning, Bob. Let's walk the line. See you next spring. Adios, amigo. You do your thing, I do my thing. The young kid's now ready to ask, why? Why do we build the walls? Why do we keep constructing the walls? Once they're built, why do we continue to make sure that they're healthy walls, they're good walls, good fences? Spring is the mischief in me. And I wonder if I could put a notion in his head, why do they make good neighbors? Isn't it where there are cows? In other words, you've got to have a need for a wall. But here there are no cows. And then a very interesting line. Take a look at it. We're going to look at it in 3B, so pay attention. I'm at line 32. Before I built a wall, I'd ask to know what I was walling in or walling out and to whom I was like to give offense. You look at, a, you look at an open field. You go, hey, we need a wall there. You figure there's got to be somebody, probably the somebody who's going to have to build the wall, who will go, why? No, no, we need a wall there. Need a fence there. Yeah, but why? Oh, no reason. We just needed it. No, 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 no. Dude, making a fence or a wall is going to take a lot of work. I need an answer from you as to why. Because when you build a wall, you either wall something in or wall something out. That's the point of walls. Why would we build a wall? He says, if you're going to build a wall, you'd ask that question. And it seems to me it would be obvious. Blood, it gets dark at night, obvious. If all we've got are trees, we don't need a wall. 
This is stupid. It was stupid the wall ever got built. All that work. Can you imagine all that work to build the thing initially? And it's really stupid that every spring we come out here and do this. This don't make no sense. It's his point. Before I built a wall, I'd ask to know what I was walling in or walling out and to whom I was like to give offense. Because walls can be interpreted as offensive. An eyesore. The signs that often, of course, are associated with walls and fences of no trespassing. In other words, what does a wall signify? I am here. You are there. Walls divide us. They give offense. If I was going to build a wall, my first question would be, why? And am I worried I'm going to give some offense to somebody? Then he says it again. Something there is that doesn't love a wall. We're back to the opening line of the poem. That wants it down. He then pauses for a moment and he says, I could say elves to him. <laughs> In other words, it's kind of like magic. Walls seem to deteriorate and come down almost magically. I could say elves to him. But it's not elves exactly. Of course it's not. We know what it is. It's nature and it's other people, right? We've already encountered it in the poem. And I'd rather, here it is, he said it for himself. Said what for himself? Wait a minute. i rather he said it for himself. Now, hey, 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 I'm teaching you to be a very close reader here. He says, I could say to him what it is that tears down the wall. I could but I'd rather he figured it out for himself. Who is this neighbor? Look at the next line. He says, I see him there. It's almost like he stops. For, it's like he's been picking this ball. You know, rocks up, rocks up, rocks up. Some of them are rolling off. He's like, ugh. Dude, these rocks, they don't want to stay up. And then all of a sudden it hits him. Why, why, why are we doing this? This is like insane. Good fences make good neighbors. He doesn't say anything back. This is all his thinking. He's like, yeah, but why? I want to say to him, yeah, but why? This is crazy. If, if I was going to put up a wall, I would at least ask, what's the point? And am I going to give any offense? I mean, you got trees. I got trees. It's silly. It's just stupid. But he says, I want him to figure it out for himself. And then all of a sudden, it's almost like he stops and he looks at his neighbor. It's as if he's looked at him for the very first time. It's like he's lived with somebody all his life and never actually looked at him. Like I challenged my juniors once, go home tonight and that person who makes you that meal, who you've never said thank you to, just look at them. Look at them. Really look at them. Not glance at them. I mean, look at them for five minutes without looking away. Take them in. Study them. And realize how little you know the people you live with that you see every day. He looks at it. It's almost as if he looks at it for the first time. And what does he see? Read with me. I see him there. Line 39. Bringing a stone grasp firmly by the top in each hand like an old stone savage armed. Big strong man picking up these big old boulders. He moves in darkness as it seems to me. Not of woods only in the shade of trees. He will not go behind his father's saying. And he likes having thought of it so well, he says it again. Good fences. May good name. End the poem. End the poem. The poem is written poem is published, but it's published in a time in American history when people started asking some really provocative questions. No, 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 no. You cannot vote. What do you mean I can't vote? Why not? Hello? Look at you. You're a woman. Hello? What are you talking? No, 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 no. You cannot go to school. Not at our university. I can't go to school at your university. Why not? Hello? Look at you. What skin color do you have? I'm black. Why? Well, there you go. What are you talking about? Good fences make good names. Ah. 
Where do our ideas about the value of balls come from? Where do they come from for his neighbor? He says it. He knows where it came from. This cat did not, he did not invent this phrase. Good fences make good neighbors. Where did it come from? Notice the genius of this poem. In a single instant, we get a word picture, don't we? Many, many years before. When that huge, strong man, good fences make good neighbors. When that huge, strong man wasn't a huge, strong man, what was he? Little boy. Little boy doing what? Walking with his daddy. Walking with his daddy doing what? What's the title of the poem? Mending. Pick up the rock. There you go, son. Put it there. Put it there. Hey, dad, why do we do this? Good fences make good neighbors. He doesn't want to go behind his father saying, good fences make good neighbors. Of course, it didn't take very long for this poem to be read by people who are asking the simple question, why are we so biased? Why are we so prejudiced? About gender? About skin color? About education? About religious differences? About sexual orientation? About, and the list goes on and on and on. Of course, there was a guy named Martin Luther King Jr. who read this poem and went, uh, Something there is that doesn't love a wall, that wants it down. All of the walls that are constructed in society, all of the walls that we work so hard to keep up all the time. Why? What's the point of all these walls within our society? Now, of course, it's ironic, right, that we now lecture this poem at a time when there is huge political debate about on the southern border of our own country, building a wall. <laughs> am I right or am I wrong? Right? Robert Frost's poem has to speak directly to the question, why the wall? We're not going to get into the political arguments pro and con to a wall. We're simply going to follow the advice and instruction of our poet here and ask the question, what are you walling in? What are you walling out? And before you build a wall, you would at least think about the possibility of offense. Who am I offending when I build a wall? Because the moment I build a wall, I got a barrier. The moment I got a barrier, I got us and I got them. The moment I got us and I got them, or I got me and I got you. The moment that happens, we are separated. We are not one. We are. We are two. And the young man in the poem says, yeah, but why? Why? The response, good fences make good neighbors. Don't go behind my father's say. It's the way I was, oh, it's the way I was taught. It's a funny thing about five-year-olds, have you noticed this? Put them on a, on a playground and watch them play together. Don't seem to care about skin color, about education differences, about money differences, economic differences. Have you noticed this with five-year-olds? Do not care. Why not? Well, I haven't been taught yet. What do you mean taught? Taught what? Taught to care. Taught to care about what? Fences, walls. And the ways in which our society is defined by walls. Oh wait, but that's not the title of our poem. Mending walls. Fixing the walls. As the walls start coming down, we have a tendency to want to go out and put them back up. Why? Good fences make good things. Now let's jump to level two. And let's ask some interesting possible messages, themes of what's going on in this poem. Of course, some of us will point out very quickly that one of the key messages in this poem is we have differences that divide us in our society because we allow it. 
because we allow it, because we allow for it to be a thing, because we allow for skin color to divide us, because we allow for economic differences or religious differences or any educational differences, whatever, to divide us. Where do we learn that? Where do we learn to look at other people as the other, as the foreign, as the different, as that to be feared? Where do we learn that? Answer. Don't want to go behind your father's saying. We are taught this. And it's an activity of rebuilding the wall, mending the wall. We go through this process from the time we're young so that by the time we get to be, oh, I don't know, let's just take a stab in the dark, 17 years old and a junior in high school, we already know what all the differences are. Oh, she's one of those. Oh, he's one of the... I heard somebody talking the other day, I just hate those jocks, those populars. Mending the wall again, I see. What do you mean mending the wall? What are you talking about? See, we got to build a wall. What, the minute I say, I hate, you fill in the blank, another person. I'm mending the wall. I'm fixing the wall. I'm putting it back up. I'm making clear in my mind, there is me and there is you. And we are fundamentally different, which is why I can't really accept you. And why I know you can't accept me. But what if somebody were to say to you, well, yeah, but that's stupid. Just because I play a sport, and just because I hang out with certain people, and just because my mom gave me a brand new Lexus because they can afford it, does not mean I'm different from you. We are contriving that wall. We are making that wall up. We keep that wall made. We keep it made. 